Today we're going to be looking at one and only in the color pastel bubblegum. I have been sick and you can probably hear it in my voice. I mean, I, I think I probably sound worse in my own head because of the congestion, but if I sound quiet or anything, it's because I cannot hear myself right now. So first thing you may notice about most watches is that they're labeled 1 through 12. I do just want to say that is not synonymous with hair levels. I do different video clips and pictures and whatnot throughout the video. So the numbers just help us keep track of each swatch. Also, my swatches are not virgin hair, so that means they've been chemically colored, treated, or bleach at some point in their existences. So for my videos, what I like to do is I will take the color directly from the container and I will apply it to the top of each swatch. Some people do like to dilute their dyes, so I will do a diluted version at the bottom of each swatch. Please keep in mind everyone's hair is different, which means everyone's hair will take color differently, plus different screens and monitors can make colors look different, so please just use my video as a reference for how this could possibly maybe turn out for you. For the diluted section, we're going to do a 4 to 1 ratio, so that's going to be one part of our dye to four parts of diluter. I do get questions on what diluter is, so I like to just kind of give a really quick answer. Um, it's essentially something that lightens the color of a semi-permanent dye. In my case, I do use a plain white conditioner as my diluter. Now, some brands will make diluters that you can use in combination with the colors that you buy from the brand. I do find that when you use the brand of diluters that they are a little bit more consistent consistent and less patchy than using conditioner, but since I use so many different brands and whatnot, I think it's better to keep the consistency, which is why I am using conditioner. All right, I'm going to let these sit for about two hours. I will then rinse them out and when they are dry, I will meet you back here and we can do some comparisons. I'd like to remind everyone that my swatches, again, are not virgin hair. Virgin hair tends to be less porous, which means it will struggle to take and hold on to color. So on any of the swatches that are a little bit darker, they may have taken some of the color, but that's not necessarily reflective of how your hair might take the color, especially if it is virgin hair. So one was green. The top half is interesting. I don't know how to quite explain it because overall, it almost has a purpley gray look. Very kind of cool and smoky. The diluted section, there is a little bit of a difference. I would say it looks a little bit, like again, a little bit more cool and smoky, but it's definitely green. So if you are trying to use something like this to cover green, definitely don't dilute it and probably do a strand test. Two was the gray. That one I think is our most cool tone swatch. I see a difference on both the top and the bottom, but obviously the bottom is a little less pink than the top. Overall, the pink turned out very, very cool toned, like not necessarily necessarily purple, but it definitely leans in that direction, like a very purpley pink. The diluted section, I would say, actually does still look pretty gray, but has a very pinky purple undertone now. I'm going to group three with five, six, and honestly seven as well. Now the undertone is different, so it did turn out a little bit different because it was a little bit more warm. I do see a little bit more pink on the direct dye portion than I do see for like five and six, but overall the dye just had a little bit of like a wash of color over the three, five, six, and seven. I don't want to say it necessarily looks like a natural hair color, but it looks more natural over those swatches than say like the platinum blonde swatch. It sort of just changed the undertone of the hair. And then as the hair got darker, the less you can see the undertone difference. It's still there, just again, not as obvious. So obviously the diluted sections look even less different, I guess. They all look a little bit more similar to how they looked pre-dye. Four was our soft black. I do want to say it looks a little bit more warm 
firm than it did before but again i wouldn't really try this over your hair unless it's been dyed black and faded maybe you'll have something different but chances are very very low i almost want to group eight in with the five through seven swatches because it has a similar idea where it's not super bright like it is on the blonde swatch but i do see more pink on the number eight than i saw on the darker swatches which is why I didn't combine it. For eight and nine, I don't think I'd go as far to say that it looks like a strawberry blonde, but because it's not super bright over those swatches, again, it almost has a slightly more natural, it's not like in your face sort of vibe. And I do say that because on like 10 and 11, it is very, very bright. If we're looking for strawberry blonde, I think the diluted section for number nine is probably the closest because it does look sort of like a medium blonde with a pinky undertone, which is kind of cute, maybe even rose gold. So then the 10 swatch definitely is a lot more saturated than the 9 swatch. And I see pink on both the top and the bottom of the swatch. But because the swatch itself wasn't as bright as the platinum blonde, it doesn't look as like neon. The platinum blonde definitely looks kind of bridging on that neon territory. I would also say the diluted section for number 10 has a kind of rosy gold look to it. But the platinum blonde diluted section looks like a very pastel pink. I don't really see any of the natural hair coming through at all. And then 12, the tone swatch. I think it looks a little bit more similar to 10 in that it's not as bright as number 11, but it's a little bit more cool toned than number 10. And interestingly enough, it didn't really take as much on the diluted section for number 12. Usually these light pinks are kind of pastel, even if they're not traditionally pastel. I just noticed they sometimes will have a harder time taking to hair. So again, do a strand test. I do see like a pink wash though over the diluted section for 12. I did also look at this under a black light. It pretty much only truly glows on the 10, 11, and 12. The rest of the swatches didn't really have that glow. So you might argue that it's not the dye itself that's glowing. It maybe is the hair underneath peeking through. Kind of hard to say, but it does look quite pink and bright under the UV light. So as for comparisons, I have two today. I decided to go with colors that also sort of bridge on that almost neon territory without actually being like a highlighter. The first one I wanted to look at today is Arctic Fox in the color Electric Paradise. This is comparable to number 12, 11, 10, and 9. So hopefully you can see now compared to the Electric Paradise, the Electric Paradise is a little bit brighter in terms of like being neon-y. Also, by the way, the Electric Paradise swatches are a little bit on the older side. They're closer to when I started my channel. I will eventually redo those, but for now there are two separate diluted sections. So the middle section and the end section are two separate diluted parts. So that's why the swatches look like that and the numbers are different. Overall, Electric Paradise does lean a little bit more warm. Now I will say it is one of those colors that kind of changes depending on the light you're in not literally changes but just how we kind of see it i've noticed that in more like indoor house lighting it can look more cool in undertone and then under direct lighting it'll look a little bit more warm but overall it is still warmer than the one and only and pigmentation wise i would say it's pretty close to the same i do see it a little bit better on the 9 slash 7 swatch, but I do partly think that is because of how bright the Electric Paradise is in comparison. And over the number 12 slash 10 swatch, it looks almost like a watermelon-y in undertone, I would say. I'm thinking the next comparison might be a little bit more similar. It's the color I thought of when I saw this dye, and it's Manic Panic in the color Cotton Candy Pink. So this is comparable to number 12, 11, 10, and 9. All right, interesting. So looks like the cotton candy pink is also a little bit more warm in undertone, but just by a little bit, because if you look at the number 12 swatches, the cotton candy pink actually looks a little bit more cool. So it could be the warmth in the swatches kind of pulling through, but on the majority of the swatches, it does look warmer. It's also a little bit brighter. So if you're looking for a cool toned bright pink, that's not quite as neon because Manic Panic has a basically neon pink that is cool tone and it's called Hot Hot Pink. That one's definitely way too bright for me to want to compare this. <laughs> 
If you want something that's a little bit more muted, still pretty bright, the one and only might be a really good choice. I think I'd almost put it in like a Barbie pink category. All right, now I'd like to look at our before and after clips. Those, as well as anything past this point in the video, will all be done in natural lighting. I hope my video helped. If you have a request, I do have a link below to a Google form you can fill out. Just remember, I only do brands that do not test on animals. Thank you so very, very, very much to my patrons and thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in my next video.